This is the Getsy Health Podcast with Janique and Tristan Roney. Hey guys, welcome back to the Gutsy Health Podcast. Hi everybody. We have Ryan back on the on the podcast, you guys, because you guys have asked for him so much. Oh Specifically, we're talking about Ryan, Ryan Blazer, Blazer sorry, from sorry. Test My Home. From Test My Home. And he did the last EMF uh, episode with us that was released, I think December 17th, wasn't it? Yes. So Ryan, welcome. Yes. Thanks for having me. Yes. Um, did you know you were so popular? <laughs> no. <laughs> like, oh my gosh. I didn't know that many people were interested in EMF stuff. So many people are interested in EMF stuff so much so that we have to have like a follow up because people listen to the last episode and they're like, and now what? Like, what do I do? And yeah, it was kind of an eye opener, yes. but, but it just really got them thinking about it. It mm-hmm. didn't necessarily take them all the way to let's do something about this. And I think that's where a lot of the questions have come from. It's, yeah. well, now I know what's out there and what, what I could possibly be dealing with. Mm-hmm. Now what? Exactly. So if a lot of you haven't listened to that episode, don't, don't worry. We're going to kind of do it. It's a quick recap here. So Ryan, tell us who you are, what you do, and then we'll go into what EMFs are. So I've been an electrical, electromagnetic engineer for over 20 years now, um, currently a building biologist, and we do in-home assessments for water, mold, air, radon, chemicals, light, sound, vibration, but mostly the EMF stuff is starting to become a big issue, and we focus more on the electric fields, magnetic fields, and radio frequency, which covers all the wireless devices. Very cool. And um, what are EMFs for listeners today? Because we're going to be use, utilizing these different terms today, and so we want you to be an expert so you can understand and kind of know what, what it is we're talking about. Okay, so EMFs are the energies that we have in the, in the air and in the wiring that we have in our house. So our earth has a static magnetic field. We have a North Pole and a South Pole, and that field doesn't change. But we have power lines that run through the air and they run through our house, and those emit out a magnetic field and they emit out an electric field. Then we also have wireless devices that transmit our voice and our pictures and our Instagram and all this stuff over the airwaves, and those require high levels of power to get that data. Right. So when we utilize the term EMF, we're kind of we're kind of lumping all of these three different energies into one term, right? Right, correct. And and we really shouldn't be doing that. So right, because we need to get more specific about which type we're talking about. Right. You can and you can talk about all of them together because they're mm-hmm. all dangerous and it's all an important thing to talk about, but if you talk about them separately, there are different effects from each different category and then mm-hmm. you also measure them differently and they also have different sources. All right. So can you give us a little bit of a rundown about like which ones we should in general, just watch out for like, because the first one was electric, right? That's right. the stuff we're going to get in our homes and our wiring, that kind of stuff. Right. The electric field is kind of always there inside of a building. It's being emitted by wiring that has voltage on it. Right. So it's not like a frequency or anything like that. It is a frequency. It's resonating at 60 hertz, 60 times a second. It's going positive and negative. Okay. Is that dangerous? Because <laughs> there's a lot of people that are like, what is a hertz, right? Well, if it's running through your body, I would imagine it's pretty dangerous. Right. It's called electrocution. <laughs> like, like, right. Exactly. <laughs> true. Yeah. So electric fields can couple onto our body and actually create currents inside of our body, which can mm-hmm. affect our heart, our nerves, our cells, our DNA at that lowest level. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that's, so electricity, electrical, um, what, what would you call it? Sorry, electrical. Yeah, yeah electric fields. So fields. anything there that has electricity, electrical component to it that you plug into the wall. Okay. okay. And then there's magnetic. And right. where are we going to find magnetic? So magnetic fields come anytime you have current that's flowing through a conductive material. But where you're going to see the high magnetic fields is your ceiling fans, your blenders. If you have any kind of wiring errors in your house, if you have stray current on your water line, then those types of situations will create a magnetic field. All right. And that, then that last one you said, a stray current on your water line. Yeah. What is that? That's kind of what you guys had in your house that we found. We had current coming in the water line and it was using the ground that was going back into your panel to get back to the power substation. And so that's problematic because like really that magnetic field should be grounded to like a copper wire in the ground outside your house, right? Right. It shouldn't go through your water pipes 
house because it's going to emit this mag- like this ginormous magnetic field throughout your house, correct? Correct. Because in traditional wiring, you have your hot and then you have your neutral and mm-hmm. those two w- lines will cancel out. But when you just have one line that's going, if you have current just on the water line, it doesn't have a return path that's canceling that out. Okay. That, that's getting kind of technical. <laughs> I'm getting, I'm even getting lost. And I, I feel like I understand EMS pretty well, but I'm like, okay, well, maybe we can circle back to that and really go into the nitty gritty. Well, and, and also it may be, a, even if you did understand it, it's not something that's necessarily easy to, to look for, right? right. You, you would have to do some testing and, and probably work with someone who right. understands this stuff pretty well to figure out if you have that and how to fix it anyway. Right. So. So, so hiring someone like Ryan would be really important to figure out if that is happening in your house. Did, is, did they do that more with older homes or are they doing that with like newer homes? So newer homes, that particular problem is not as big of a concern because you use PEX, which is a plastic that doesn't conduct electricity for your water oh. line. Older homes, they ground to the water line and that's when you get more of that situation. Because those water lines were made from copper. Correct. And so they just use the water lines made from copper to ground the magnetic fields. And now it's just going all throughout the house. Correct. Gotcha. Okay. And then radio frequencies, that's our cell phones, our wireless, our everything that is convenient and wonderful and that we're addicted to and we don't want to let go, right? Correct. But also some things that you may not expect to be on that particular list like, like uh i don't know our baby monitors baby monitors oh. your vehicles in the newer cars oh my yeah. gosh right uh microwaves microwaves when you're using them yeah when they're on yes right? when they're yeah. on. correct okay. that's a bad one okay so so we c- so hopefully you guys got a little bit of a round down about what these different types of emfs are where you see them um where they're problematic now we had a bunch of you guys ask questions oh and, about- and by the way sorry yes. if you feel like we went through this too quickly and you want a little bit more depth on that go back to our last episode yes. december 17th on emfs and that was in 2019 that was Last year, mm-hmm. uh-huh. and uh, and you can get a lot more detail on that. Yes. But because we've already had that episode, we wanted to go into some of the questions that that episode brought up for people. Totally. So that's kind of what we're going to kind of focus on today, right? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So this is kind of like a nice little bonus episode for you guys. Um, all right. So I've had a lot of people, 5G is a hot topic and nobody knows anything about it. And yet we're all terrified and we're seeing 5G on our cell phones. Um Ryan, what do we need to know about 5G? Yeah, so 5G is the next generation of cellular technology. We had 1G, which was just your basic cell phone. Then you had 2G, which put text messaging in there. And then you had 3G, which started to add some data. Then we had 4G, which threw in video. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to step up to 5G, which takes all of those, but it also makes it much faster and much higher bandwidth. Okay. But the kind of the more harmful thing about 5G is they're going to make it much more concentrated. So they want to put cell towers every hundred yards or so, Mm -hmm. so that you can be connected all the time, high speed data everywhere. And they want to put it on the satellites. They want to make it a worldwide thing. And so the thing that's kind of scary about that is if you want to get away from it, if you want to tune out, if you want to turn your cell phone off, be disconnected, it's going to be really hard to do that because you're going to be immersed with this 5G EMF technology. So how is that different from like 4G? Because if we want to disconnect from 4G, we just put our phones on airplane mode, right? Right. So how is that different from 5G blasting us and we put our airplane mode, like our phones on airplane mode, we're still getting blasted. Correct. Correct. Okay. Yeah. So, so what do we do about that? What are our rights? Like moms want to know, like, what is the best thing, the healthiest thing that they can do for themselves, for their children, for their environment, their schools, because it sounds like we have no rights around this. So can you go into that a little bit more? One thing that you can do right now that a lot of communities are doing around the United States is getting involved with the local group and talking to your city council. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of local groups that you can find Facebook and you go to the city council and you tell them, look, we don't want this technology. We at least want it limited. Don't put it by our schools. Don't put it by our nurseries. Don't put it by our hospitals. Right. You know, don't put it in my front yard. You know, speak up about it mm-hmm. because right now the FCC and these companies are coming in and they're just installing this stuff wherever they want. Wherever they want. Wherever they want. And so you might have one pop up in your front yard you know, on the telephone pole and the light pole. And there's not much you can do about that. So right now, before this stuff gets fully implemented, Go up and say something to your city council. Talk about it and say, we don't want this. Like we really have no say in where it, where it goes. 
It could go up in our backyard, like right outside our backyard. Right. Absolutely. That is unbelievable. Okay. So, so do you know of any Facebook groups, like large organizations that people can start like Googling and researching, or you just go on Facebook and type in what? Just go on Facebook and type 5G or no 5G or anti-5G and and just do a little search and you'll find something. All righty. Yeah, every community has their own little group. All right. But for now, if we have 4G, like we can put our phones on airplane mode, right? That's correct. Okay. Now, I, I also found, I was looking into this, in the iPhones at least, if you go into the settings, you have the option to turn off LTE. Mm-hmm. And LTE, if I remember right, it's like the 4G thing. Mm-hmm. And so I kind of wonder if turning off the LTE will also turn off the 5G for so, people. So we actually kind of tested that when we were, at, when Ryan and I were upstairs testing cell phone, like how it was emitting. Mm-hmm. When I turned that LTE back on, mm-hmm. his gauge went through the roof. Isn't that correct? Yeah. So you can turn off right now your LTE. Wouldn't you say that would be a good option for people? Yep. There's different levels on your phone that we can, and we played with that a little bit. We turned just the Bluetooth on and we saw the levels and the Wi-Fi, which is a little higher and then the cellular data, and then the LTE, the highest. So, okay. so obviously, the, the less you have on, the less right. your phone is emitting, right? Yep. Yes. Yep. And so you just have to figure out what's going to work for you. Right. Okay, so, so for someone listening here, like they're looking at their cell phone, and they're saying, what should I do, Ryan, with my cell phone right now? So there's, you can try and put it on airplane mode whenever you're not using it, right? That's probably the biggest thing you can do is put it on airplane mode when you're not using it. Okay. Is using your Wi-Fi on at the same time as like cellular network, we should just do either or, right? Yeah. So some people you can use cellular calls over your Wi-Fi and that's Mm going to be less dangerous, Mm -hmm. but ultimately um, putting it on airplane mode and then using... Uh, landline if you can. I know that sounds old school. Right. Super old school. Most uh, people are like, what is a landline? You can get them pretty cheap these days. We have Uma at our house. It's six ninety nine a month. And it's a landline. Oh. It plugs into your router and no EMFs. Nice. So then we could ignore a landline instead of our cell phones. Right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But okay. So they're looking at their cell phone. You pull that, like if you have an iPhone, for instance, mm-hmm. you pull down that, that, that screen that shows you your Bluetooth, your Wi-Fi, your cell phone signal. You want to just have one of those on versus the three. If you can. Yeah. Okay. Because having all three of those on your Bluetooth, your Wi-Fi, and your cell phone signal, it's pulling multiple things all at the same time. Versus yes. one thing at a time. So it's compounding. It's like right. 10 plus 10 plus 10 equals 30. Right. It's not like 10 is covering all three bases. That's correct. It's additive. All these signals added together are additive exposures. Okay. So I want to talk about this for a second because there's this, there was this article that came out a couple of weeks ago in um, KSL where there's this company in Salt Lake claiming that the, the Wi-Fi um, emissions of the cell phone or the, the frequency emissions of the cell phone is double that of the legal limit. And, um, and Apple responded and said, no, when we tested it, it was within the legal limit. Is this what they're talking about? Apple measuring it on one signal versus all of us having three things emitting at the same time. And it's that accumulative um, response that we are measuring. Is that what they're talking about? Do you think? Right. So when they set the guidelines for the cell phones or any wireless device, they're testing it singularly. They take it into a room that's shielded and they test these devices one at a time. Hold on. I want to stop you there. A room that is shielded. Right. So you're not getting any outside interference from any other frequency devices. Right. So let's, let's take this to something that's real. You're going into a restaurant and everyone has their cell phones on. Mm -hmm. That's all accumulative, right? Right. It's all additive. Not a shielded room. It's not a shielded room. And you're being blasted by your phone and the person next to you and the person standing behind you and the person probably working in the restaurant serving your food, right? Right. And the Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth and the ear pods and then all the FM radio stations, the AM radio stations, the television stations, the police scanner their radios, <laughs> the airplanes, the satellites, all that stuff is additive. You add all that stuff together. Add it all together. Yes. So now Apple is taking their cell phones in a shielded room where all of that is not added. And then they're measuring the phone. One, one aspect of one the phone aspect. at a time. Uh, at a time. 
And that's with no apps on in the background Mm -hmm. because you were saying the more apps you have in the background that, that, because they're all collecting data all the time, then they're pulling more data. So your signal is stronger, correct? Correct. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Well, before I answer that, I just want, because there might be people out there saying, oh, this is Mm -hmm. BS, this isn't true. Where's the basis for this? I'm getting this information right now directly off the International Commission for Non-Ionizing Radiation Protection. That is the worldwide commission that the FCC, the World Health Organization, NIOSH, and OSHA all pulled their limits from. There was a study that was done in 1998. It's the guidelines from Health and Physics. It's number 74494. All this information is coming off directly from their website. How, how can people find that website? What's the... So they can... That was a Google, mouthful on their name. There. Yeah, they can Google ICNIRP, which stands for International Commission for Non-Ionizing Radiation. ICNIRP. And then right. use Google uh, EMF Exposure Limits. Okay. There you go. And it will, all this information and all the studies are, are in there. Cool. Okay. And this is a government... This is a government... Uh, set website. So they have set limits. Absolutely. Right. So there are limits and Apple is abiding by those limits by measuring these cell phones in a shielded room and measuring one aspect at a time. One at a time. Okay. And, and it's just, and you, as you were saying earlier to us, it's just pushing the, it's like, it's barely within the, the, the legal limit. Yes. Okay. But then we, we take ourselves now to reality Mm -hmm. to every day where we're in an office building and everyone has their cell phones on them and it is pulling Wi-Fi and it's pulling Bluetooth and it's pulling cell phone signals. Mm -hmm. So most likely above the limit now. Oh yeah, absolutely. Way above the limit. That's legal, not healthy. What's legal. There's a big (laughs) difference there. And and when it comes to government standards, they are very rarely optimal. They're minimal, Mm -hmm. right? Yes. Totally. Okay. So now we're, we're pulling all of these things. We're not in a shielded room anymore because there's no shielded rooms, right? right? Mm -hmm. We're we're at our workspace. Everything is smart. Now everything is Bluetooth and we're, we're blasting ourselves basically. Okay. Above legal limits. Right. And nothing's being done. Yep. And I want to make a note that these legal limits are set at the point of where you, they start to measure your skin and your flesh heating up. Mm. From the inside out. Mm. So that's when these levels are set from thermal effects. Not and biological, not long-term, not chronic, not cancer, from when it actually starts cooking you. Wow. And that we say this all the time on the show, but that is really important that long-term effects of these things have not been studied and they are very been. unlikely to be studied, right. which means that you are the guinea pig. We are, yep. Your family are the guinea pigs. Yep. Then there are actually uh, some studies now starting to come out, not necessarily on the full long-term because mm-hmm. a lot of this stuff has only been around the last 20 years, right. but there are studies that are starting to come out that are linking it to cancer and brain tumors and neurological effects and a whole range of, of, of neurological problems and chronic illnesses. If you go to uh, the Bioinitiative Report, Google Bioinitiative Report, and they've put together all the studies up to date and categorized them on their effects. And there's a bunch of peer-reviewed studies there that you can look up and pull up and see what this stuff is actually doing to us. Right. That's, that's, that, that that's kind of discouraging. <laughs> like, yeah. I want to, I want to be really honest. Um, but there's things that we can do, you know, like what mm-hmm. we were saying earlier was put your phone on airplane mode. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I, I don't want to jump the gun too, too much, but Ryan and I were working on something to help people, you know, like we're, and I don't know when we're going to get this out, you know, but, but, hopefully we're going to start seeing movements where people are waking up to this and they're saying, you know what, we need boundaries because what are we seeing right now with people and technology? And you nailed it. You said, we are addicted. Please tell us more about this that you're seeing. And, and I mean, like Trist and I, we, we see, we counsel nutrition and people are addicted to food. Right. And so it's like, okay, let's, let's look at it, at it as it is and realize that you are chemically addicted to this food. And then we re retrain ourselves away from that so we can eat nourishing food so you can heal your body. We're seeing this with our technology where people can't let Right. Absolutely. Yeah. And so, I mean, for the last 20 years, I've worked in the commercial industrial industry, setting the standards for public and private health, you know, in the work industry, making sure a lot of these standards are set and they're followed. But I saw that so much affect affecting people's health. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, to me, it's, I wondered what's going on in the home because there's really nobody out there 
setting standards in the home and making sure that these levels aren't being um, overrun inside the home. And so when mm-hmm. I started doing this and getting into the homes and seeing people that are truly sick from this stuff, it was amazing. It blew me away. Mm-hmm. How many people call me up on a daily basis and say, I am sick from this stuff. Like I can't sleep. I have headaches, uh, a whole range of problems. And we go into their home and we find that their exposure limits are through the roof yeah. really high. And as soon as we take this stuff away, the, a lot of their problems go away. And Absolutely. so I'm seeing this on a, on a daily basis. But when you brought up the addiction point, that's a big one that I'm seeing. Mm-hmm. And not just the kids and the teenagers, us adults are addicted to yeah. these phones too. Tristan, you were mentioning how with our last podcast, you've had a lot of men come up to you and be like, this has caused marital issues because mm-hmm. what we're seeing is women are totally on board. They're like, yep, let's switch off Wi-Fi at night. Let's put our phones in airplane modes and husbands, spouses, mm-hmm. what's, what's well, happening? And, and, well, obviously they're not very happy about it. Right. And, right. Th- and there's a good reason for that because technology has brought us a lot of convenience, so much. right? Mm-hmm. We have blazing fast internet that goes right to the palm of our hand mm-hmm. so we can watch whatever videos we want. We can play video games yeah. whenever we want with our friends on the other side of the world, if we'd like. Mm-hmm. And now people are telling us, this is bad for you, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? That's not fair. Mm-hmm. That makes life harder. Yeah. So yeah, they're upset about it. And because they, they don't have the, the education on it that uh, some of the people who have listened to the podcast have gotten Right. to them, it just seems like, well, there's these tinfoil hat crazy people telling my partner that all this stuff is bad for me. And now I have to go through all this inconvenience and potentially pay out money to change how our house functions Mm -hmm. and for what, right? Right. So I I think a really good question that maybe we can try to help people answer is how do you get someone on board with this? Like what, how do you explain it to them in a way that, uh, helps them see the importance of it. So I want to bring up something. I think we spoke about this in the last episode, but these husbands would go on the internet and then research and be like, look, this graph shows that on these frequency waves, like cell phones are here and then you have sun and then you have x-rays and then it gets worse and worse. So it's safer than the the radiation from the sun. Like, why is it so hard? Because what you explained is that that's, you, we have the magnetic, we have the electric, electrical, and then we have the radio frequency. Why can we not find these levels of the radio frequencies of all of these machines? It's so hard. It's so hard. You try and Google and you can't find it. Right. Yeah. You got to know where to look for this stuff because obviously a lot of this stuff we're looking at on is on wireless technology. Right. And so you're not going to find a lot of anti-wireless technology propaganda out there on a wireless device. Right. So, so where <laughs> do we find it? Because these husbands were like, look at this article, look at this research. Like you see, it's, it's, it's safer than, you know, whatever, like microwaves are fine. Like, so w- how do we have this disconnect and how do we get around it so that everyone can kind of be on the same page? The best thing is to really do some research into the look, you can look in the world health organization. You can even go to the FCC website. You can go to, um, OSHA, NIOSH, uh, there's a couple other websites. Type in um, federal EMF exposure limits. Mm -hmm. Do the research yourself and see what these levels are. But if you want to put a little common sense to it, we've, our bodies, our our humans as a society has over the past million or however many long years we've been on this earth have evolved in a static electric field and a static magnetic field with a North and a South Pole. Just in the last hundred years, we introduced non-native EMFs. That's alternating current, alternating frequencies Mm -hmm. that affects our bodies. So our bodies run on electrical and biological and chemical. So our hearts, our brain cells, our nerves, all this stuff runs on electrical impulses. Mm -hmm. So our bodies have been developed in the static field. And now we're introducing this non-native EMFs these alternating fields, these way higher than frequency than normal, that what we're used to. Mm-hmm. And now we put on top of that wireless technology, this Absolutely. really high frequency, really high power, and it's affecting our bodies. Yep. Well, um, you, you know, it's, it's that, it's that conversation of, um, you know, in hindsight, how did people in the twenties and thirties not know that smoking was mm-hmm. terrible and cancers for them? Now it's so <laughs> obvious Is Wi-Fi going to be what smoking was 50, 60 years ago? And I think, yes, like in 50, in 50, on that note, you can go back to like the seventies or Mm sixties and there are some 
today very prominent politicians who back then are on record defending smoking and saying, ah, it's hogwash. It's not bad for you. Right. It's not bad for you. Like I think in 50 years time, like our grandchildren are going to be like, what were you guys thinking? Maybe if, uh, hopefully, (laughs) I don't know. I mean, or maybe, maybe it'll just get worse and worse. worse. Maybe it will. Maybe the information will be controlled well enough that it never really becomes a mainstream. I I think we're better than that. I think people, when we band together, like we can, we can push for change. Like, but we all have to be educated and united on this. Right. And, and so far what we're seeing is husbands and wives can't be re- united on this. <laughs> yeah. I see that a lot. It's unfortunately. A real, it, it, unfortunately, EMFs right now is very polarizing. It's so polarizing. It well, and, and we talked about the, the addictive nature of the internet. Right. Mm-hmm. And I think that there's a parallel here that we are, we're addicted to this stuff. So totally. we're literally working against our own kind of cravings right. in order to become educated on it. Holy so, so it's hard for the average person to want to care. Right. Like, why should I, why should I get educated on something that's just going to make me anxious and True. inconvenience my life? True. I'd rather stay ignorant and I'll probably be fine. Mm-hmm. Right? right. And you'll probably never be able to tie whatever issues you develop back mm-hmm. to this sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. So you can live your life in sick bliss. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. There's, there's really many layers to this onion and it really goes much deeper than is this healthy or not, or mm-hmm. does EMFs affect us or not? Because you have mm-hmm. the addiction factor with wireless devices. You have the content that's available to mm-hmm. young children. You have the security, how easy it is to hack into these wireless devices. Then you have totally. the whole data collection aspect, you know, the government mm-hmm. and all these companies are collecting all this data on us and selling it. And so you have all these things that you put in together it's, it, and then you have the psychological effect from the addiction and the, mm-hmm. the, the disagreements in the families. It's, it's a really deep topic that we're talking about. It is. It, it, this is like a vaccine conversation. Like people are so polarized with vaccines and I feel like EMFs is, is it kind of in that realm of polarization mm-hmm. where it's, it's, there's, there's so many unknowns, but what we do know is that we don't know enough mm-hmm. and yet we're blasting forward into this. Well, and, and Ryan, you're looking at me and you're like, Oh, I know (laughs) like Ryan knows like he's the expert. But what I'm saying is like, we don't know enough as far as like the accumulative effects, the accumulative effects and stuff. And like, we need more research, like more, like the research is there, but people want like hundreds of thousands of research to back this up versus like 10 or a hundred. Like what mm. would you say the world of research with EMFs? Is it, is there a lot of funding going into this? Not as much as there should be. And the problem is, is that we're, we're not seeing the long-term effects yet because we're yeah. not in the long-term stage yet. We're experimenting on ourselves. 20 years ago, if yeah. you think back was when first cell phones were just coming out. True. And so in the last 20 years, we took a bunch of baby steps to get to where we are now. Mm-hmm. But if you look back to where we were then, it was a different world. Right. It was a different place. Right. Right. So, so yeah, we're like, like Tristan said, we're the guinea pigs. Mm-hmm. Right. So, okay. Anything else we want to say about this? Cause we have I, a bunch of, yeah. Th- I do have one last thing to say about this. Um, and here, while we don't know a lot, here's what I do know that with almost everything we talk about on this podcast, it, seems to make a lot of sense for us to go back to what our ancestors were doing. Mm-hmm. Right. Totally. That, yeah. that when we were eating real food, mm-hmm. uh, particularly food that we knew who was growing it, yep. people were healthier. Yep. Right. Exactly. That when we were interacting with the world around us, mm-hmm. the way that our ancestors do, where we're actually interacting with it and not through totally. a screen, we do better. Yep. So I don't see how this particular thing would be any different. Right. Even if we're absolutely wrong about the physiological effects of this, which I don't think we are, no. we still would benefit from minimizing the amount of this technology that we allow to infiltrate our lives right. and spend our time interacting with the real world more. Totally. And, and kind of going back to, we talk a lot about eating natural food versus man-made synthetic food. What you're saying, what you were saying earlier is like the electrical currents that our bodies make, that the earth makes, these are natural. Right. What we're dealing with, what we put in our pockets, what we're looking at on screens, these are unnatural frequencies. These are unnatural, um, waves. Mm -hmm. What, what, What would you even call it? Are they waves? Are they frequencies? Are they, what are they? They are, yeah, their w- waves are frequencies, but okay. they're variations of current and voltage in time. Mm-hmm. If you want to get scientific about okay. it, but 
Yeah. I mean, you nailed it on the head. That's, I mean, but yeah, you couldn't have said it better. They're, they're just, they're unnatural. They're unnatural. And we are not only are we exposing ourselves to these unnatural waves, but we're bombarding ourselves with them. We're wearing right. them constantly 24 seven with our Apple watches, with our cell phones in our pockets, with our <sighs> iPads, with our kids toys, with our kids. <clears throat> like they all are like, it's just, it's everywhere and it's unnatural and our bodies are not used to this. Which once again is not to take away from the fact that there are benefits to these things. Totally. Because I don't want anyone to get the impression that we are like these extremists that no. want everyone to go back to living in a tent and herding sheep or something. Totally. The fact is that we do benefit in a lot of ways from these things, like having 911 mm -hmm. in your pocket yes. if you need it. That's mm -hmm. a very valuable thing. Being able, we, in our business, we interact with people on the other side of the world. Yeah. I literally Wonderful. did a consultation with someone in Eastern Europe mm -hmm. this last week. And that was available to us because of technology. Mm -hmm. So we're not saying we need to completely get rid of the technology. No. What we're saying is we need to limit how much of our lives technology right. is able to take over. Totally. Right. And to add to that, what, yeah, we're not against the internet. We're not against technology. We're not against these devices. What we are against, and I shouldn't even say against, but what we're warning and what we're trying to limit is the EMF exposure that's coming from the wireless portion of this stuff right. mm -hmm. and the electrical fields and the magnetic fields. Right. And there are ways that you can use this technology safely. There are a lot of things you can do. Mm -hmm. So you can still have all of these comforts. You just got to do it in the correct way and you got to be educated about it. And that's right. the problem is that we're not educating ourselves or our kids mm -hmm. about how to use these devices safely right. and not just the EMF portion, but the addiction side, the content, mm -hmm. the safety, the security, all totally. these things need to be talked about. They need to have, we need to be teaching the kids in school about this stuff because there's a lot of scary stuff that these kids can be getting into with these devices, right. mm -hmm. dangerous stuff. And so it, the education needs to be there. It's right. just like cigarettes or drugs or alcohol. Mm -hmm. You can't just give this stuff to unmature people. The, you got to have the education behind it. Well, and, and what we're saying is you don't have to become a monk. You just need to have boundaries, mm -hmm. you know, and, and this idea of having boundaries with technology is a completely new concept. No one's ever talked about this. Maybe people have, but it, it like, this is new to our world of like, Hey, putting Wi-Fi off at night while everyone's sleeping. Something as simple as that, like j no one needs that. So switch it off. Having your phone on airplane mode whenever you're not using it. Boom, easy, done. You know, you don't have to think twice about it or having your phone more than 20 feet away from you when you're not using it and putting the, the, the ringer on loud so you can hear it when someone's calling you if you need that convenience. But that's, it's that versus having it in your pocket all the time. Mm -hmm. So have it 20 feet away from you so that that's a healthier realm. Having one thing drawn to it. So not Bluetooth and cell phone wire, uh, signal and Wi-Fi, like do one of those, you know, just li like making these little limitations. It's like saying, it would be like saying, Hey, being out in the sun, like sun it radiates you. So never go in the sun. No, go in the sun. It's so good for you. But that, that actually but, is a big topic that's been up for us it, lately. It, so it we're not, actually, not just pulling that out of thin air. But it, what we're saying is don't be in the sun for 12 hours a day. Cause you're going to burn yourself, right? Like limit it, like 30 minutes at a time, you know, go in the sun and be in the shade a lot. Like, you know, a couple hours. Awesome. But 12 hours every day, like you're going to burn yourself to a crisp. So that's what we're saying is just limit it, you know, be, be smart about it. And you don't have to make life extremely inconvenient. It's just small little things that you can be a little bit more conscious about, but not anxious about. Right. Okay. All well, right. I okay. think that, kind of pounds that topic into okay. the ground. So let's, let's maybe get to some of the other questions that came up. So some of the other questions that came up were stickers and harmon, like stickers and blockers and uh, the harmonizers. Har harmonizers. Yes, exactly. So let's talk about those <laughs> because so, this is a big one. So from a physics standpoint and from an EMF exposure standpoint, they do absolutely nothing that yeah. we've measured. I've measured all of them. A lot of my clients that I go to their house, they have these things. And so I take the opportunity to measure it and show them and give them an example of what they do. And they don't do anything to lower EMF exposure. If you talk to some of these people that sell them, they'll tell you, well, they neutralize or they line up the cells in your body or they do all mm -hmm. these other things that might be. And if that's what you're trying to do, that's what you should claim that it does. Mm -hmm. But if you're trying to lower EMF exposure, if you're trying to 
cheat your way around using these devices and not getting hurt. It's that's not the way to do it. These mm-hmm. devices are not doing that for you. And, and and just to reiterate that point, they may or may not, those harmonizers may be lining up the cells the way that they say they are, but we can't test that. We have no way of knowing whether that's really happening. So you're, you're gambling with right. your own money and your health. If yeah. you go that route, I can tell you 100% as an electromagnetic engineer that they are not lowering your EMF exposure. Mm-hmm. Period. Right. Absolutely right. not. How about the cell phone covers? Like, cause the, like if it's covering like half the phone. Now there is, there's, there's some people that say, well, then it makes the exposure on your face more intense because it's blasting you from one side versus it, it being exposing like on the back and the front. So what do you have to say about that? So it depends on how you use the device. So these cases, the front that covers the front is usually shielded. And so when you close, you dial, you get the phone call going and then you close the case and mm-hmm. you put that up to your head. What it's supposed to do in theory is bounce off of that cover, the signal and mm-hmm. bounce it back away. There's a couple of problems that, that can happen with that. If the cover is in between the cell tower and the phone, then the phone is going to have to work that much harder yeah. to get its signal back to the tower because the phone will regulate its power based on how far away it is from the, from the cell phone tower. And it does that to save battery life. So if you're putting shielding in between the tower and the phone, the phone has to kick up the higher power. Mm. What that's going to do is radiate your hand more and potentially radiate your head more. Gotcha. And another problem with that is a lot of people use their phones with the faces open. They're scrolling Instagram, they're scrolling Facebook, yep. they're sending a text. What's going on then is they have the cover flipped around to the backside and they're holding it in their hand. So now all of those signals that should be sent into the tower is being reflected directly at their face, their face. at their head. So it's a reflector, yeah. basically. It's a reflector. You got to look at it like a mirror. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so if you are going to have those cases, you need to hold it open like a book when you're looking at it from mm. the front. Gotcha. So I, it's, it's a really iffy thing. I'd recommend, um, some different strategies versus relying on that. Like mm-hmm. what strategies? Like talking on a speakerphone mm-hmm. or getting devices that you can, you can plug into the phone and it has a handset that you can put up to your head and then you can set the phone up on your desk up to three feet away. Okay. So you would say three feet is a safer like exposure much better than up against your head. I mean, every inch is going to matter. Right. Mm -hmm. And I I think it's worth noting too, that some of the testing that they do with that exposure, they're assuming a certain amount of distance between your head and the phone. And a lot of people aren't doing that. They're literally touching their head with the phone. So, and at that close, it, it, it amplifies dramatically. Yeah. If you read a lot of the instruction manuals for these phones, they'll say you actually have to hold it, you know, five eighths to an inch away from your head. And who does that really? And that's to be at the max maximum exposure limit. Wow. Wow. So keep it away from your face, put it on speaker. Um, don't use ear pods, right? The air pods. Is that yeah, what they're the called? Wireless. Are pretty, the, those the, are very, very strong EMF. They very are. Strong, yeah. We don't have those. I, I wish we did so we can measure them, but so those are, so just use wires guys, yep, like get wires. some really pretty ear plug wires. Some people take it even further. They say that because the earplugs themselves are electrified that mm. you need to use a, a non electric headset, if that makes sense. So it's literally just a tube and it, it transmits acoustically to your oh, ears. Oh, I see what you're saying. Interesting. Yeah. What do you say about that? Yeah. So you can go, that's at the last 10% that we're working with here. Mm-hmm. On, so the antenna is in the phone. So the, mm-hmm. the key is to get that antenna as far away from you physically okay. as possible. Okay. But yeah, those, those devices that you're talking mm-hmm. about will decouple the electric field that's coming from the phone mm-hmm. from your head gotcha. through the plastic tube. So it's, it does make a big difference, but the exposure level coming off the antenna from the phone is much higher than your, the than, electric field. Than the electric field. Right. That totally makes sense. Yep. Um, okay. So um, what about uh, solar panels? So solar panels from a health standpoint will create dirty electricity and dirty electricity. We didn't Mm. talk about a little bit and that's basically just interference on the electrical line. It'll have spikes. And if you look at on a graph, instead of having a smooth sine wave looking Mm -hmm. signal, you have spikes and peaks in there and that can be harmful for you. So that's all solar panels on people's homes. Right. And it's not necessarily the solar panel. It's the inverter that converts the 12 volt to the 120 volt AC. Could you get a converter that 
that doesn't produce dirty electricity? You know, I get that. I get that question a lot. And I think there is some companies that make those that are a lot more expensive. Mm-hmm. They use a lot uh, cleaner circuitry. So if someone is wanting to install like solar panels on their home right now, what questions should they ask? I want a converter that doesn't convert dirty mm-hmm. electricity. Right. One that doesn't produce electromagnetic interference on the line. And it's funny, we're talking about, I had a client not too long ago that had some, and I was asking about, you know, are, is this worth it? Are you glad you did it? And he said, you know, more or less you're paying for the power in advance with, mm-hmm. with solar panels. Oh, yeah. Totally. Doing. yeah. Our, our old house had a solar panel thing on it and, mm-hmm. and it was expensive. <laughs> and then yeah. we just sold the house anyways. And they said it would raise our, our home value and it didn't, but that's okay. That's a different story for another time. Um, so what about people that are buying? Okay. Hold on. Going back to the solar panels. Um, would you recommend people just do geothermal? Geothermal is good if you have that type of ground heat available. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't, yeah. it's not available everywhere. So, mm, that's but, true. but it, it's probably worth doing your research, right? If you're interested in getting solar panels, if you already have solar panels, mm-hmm. do your research. It, there, there may very well be a good solution out there. Mm-hmm. And if you can find that it's probably worth paying whatever it costs in order to have that availability. Okay. Cause there are a lot of great environmental benefits to going solar. So we don't want to discourage people from doing that. Right. right. That's a good point. Yes. But, but protect yourself. Yes. Right? That's great point, babe. Um, okay. So let's talk about like buying homes, buying old homes, building new homes and neighborhoods. So let's start with when you are buying an older home, what do you want to look for? So, maybe to back up just a little bit on that, looking for a home in general, I think that it's becoming more and more common knowledge that these EMFs are becoming damaging to our health. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking at a home and it's right next to a cell tower or it has high tension power lines running through the backyard, that's probably not a good investment because it might not be mainstream now, but in 20 years from now, you might have a really hard time selling that home Mm -hmm. because people are going to be on board with this stuff and saying, Hey, that's has a really high magnetic field coming through it because of these power lines or I'm right next to this cell tower. Now we know that causes cancer. That's a so, really good point. In 20 years time, your home value might drop significantly, significantly because, because people are catching on like wildfire. Yes. I think. And if you happen to live in a home right now that has those high tension power lines and I, the high tension power lines, I mean, those big power lines that transmit the big power, not just your little ones running through the alley. Mm-hmm. If you have those within 200 yards of your house or a quarter mile, it's probably a good idea to sell that home now before a lot of people get on board with how damaging that stuff okay. is. Sell while the market's hot. Right. Because <laughs> like, yes. who knows when this is going to catch on, right? Yeah. So the power lines that run through neighborhoods, is it like, that's fine, right? I'm talking, you know, so the little ones that your house cooks to directly through that little gray box bucket looking mm-hmm. thing. Those little small ones, they're not as bad. And when we measure those, the influence of those is really small. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about the main ones that feed the neighborhood or feed the whole town. Mm -hmm. So, and they're, unfortunately, that's pretty common to have those. They run those right through neighborhoods. Okay. All right. And so to answer your question about what do you look for in an older home, homes that are pre forties or fifties that have the old knob and tube wiring, those are really high for magnetic fields. They're also I'm starting to hear that they're getting hard to insure. Mm. So if you have that type of wiring in your home, it's a fire hazard, a shock hazard, high magnetic fields, and you might have trouble insuring those. Homes. You said knob and what wiring? So they call it knob and tube. And what it is, is it's the two separate lines, the hot and the neutral are separated and they're hooked on little knobs and just pounded on the wall, inside the wall. Okay. But that's really, that's in the forties and earlier. So, so basically so, if your home was built before 1950, you probably yeah. want to ask about that. And if yes. it is that knob and tube, you're either looking at rewiring the whole house or it's not a good idea. Right. That, Absolutely. Okay. All right. Yep. And what about like new homes? Like what are all new homes really clean? Do they have like, what should we know about that? So, and, and that might be another topic because I, you know, we, we inspect for air quality and radon mold mm. and everything. And so there's a lot of air quality issues that we talk about with newer homes because they're so airtight. But as far as EMF, um, one thing in the new homes that they're not doing is they're not putting the wiring in the walls that's required for an in-home network. If you want to hardwire your home and get completely away from wireless, which is what I recommend mm-hmm. and what we do at our house. Mm-hmm. A lot of these newer homes are just relying completely on wireless technology. So they're not putting all the speaker wires and your network wires and your telephone wires in the walls like they used to. Right. You know, in 2005 and to 1980, Mm -hmm. most of those homes have a lot of the wiring 
pre-wired oh, into the into the home, which makes it really easy to hardwire your house and get rid of the wireless completely. Mm-hmm. So if you're building a home, you want to do wiring. Absolutely. All, like sure. put, yep. put, a, put a phone in there, put the... The, the network, the, the Cat5 mm-hmm. and the speaker wire and your cable. And your cable. Yeah, the coax cable. And it's really cheap to do. And even if you don't plan on using that cable now, resale value is going to be much more valuable in the future if you have these homes already wired. Because once the walls are up and the drywall's up, yeah. very hard to get those wires to your house. Very, very hard. Cool. That's that's a great point to put up. Okay. So when people are trying to look for good neighborhoods to to move into, what should they be looking for? No, like we mentioned before, the big wires are a no-no, the cell phone towers, no-no. What else would you recommend that people are not living nearby or uh, should be mindful of when looking for a neighborhood? Are we talking just DMF stuff or just in general? I Let, mean, because there's- go a little bit more Yeah, general. let's go more yeah. general because mm-hmm. it doesn't do any good for a person to find an EMF friendly house that- has is, other problems, right? Yeah, in a exactly. toxic swamp exactly. or something. I mean, mm-hmm. some of the obvious ones are if it's by a big freeway or a big highway, mm-hmm. then you're going to get some carbon monoxide and you're going to get pollution coming off of that, plus noise and vibration. If you're by a big factory, mm-hmm. uh, if it's a big building with a bunch of white smoke or colored smoke coming out of it, right. you got to ask those kind of questions. Also, farms or orchards where they're going to spray, spray a lot of glyphosate or mm-hmm. pesticides and herbicides that could drift over into your into your yard. These are all things you want to look for mm-hmm. buying a home because not just for the health and safety reasons, but for resale value down the road. Right. There was, um, what was that research, uh, paper that came out? It was done in Europe or in England and it showed that the closer to a freeway you lived, the higher rate of what was, I think it was cancer, was it cancer, mm-hmm. the higher uh, rate of cancer people mm-hmm. were experiencing. But I think, I think generally health issues tend to go up quite a bit as you get closer to the freeway. And yep. there's a lot of reasons, probably noise pollution is a big factor in that as it well. Yep. Mm-hmm. We, we used to live kind of close to a freeway and yeah, we did. it was awful, but there were some neighborhoods that were like up on a hill and the, the sound would just be funneled right into the neighborhoods. And it was unbearable. Mm-hmm. And I don't know how people could handle living there because it just made me feel crazy whenever right. I was in those right. neighborhoods. Um, okay. So another question someone asked was, where should we put our routers? As far away from the sleeping area as possible. Okay. And still being able to get your connection. All right. What I want to emphasize to people is walls do not block the radio frequencies at all. So it it doesn't matter that there's three walls between you and the router or that it's below you. You're like, well, I'm on the second floor. It doesn't matter. Like it's still going to hit you. So you want it as far away as possible. How many feet would you say is a safe distance or is that going to depend on the router and how much it depends on the router? There's these super super turbo routers out there that can blast up to a quarter mile. Sometimes we can pick up the neighbor's router pretty easy. Mm -hmm. How are those legal? Like how do they measure the, the legal limits for those? Do you know? So the FCC sets the legal limit at nine watts per meter squared. Okay. So as long as it's within that range, it can, it's legal. So can you dumb down for me? Because I, nine watts per meter, that means nothing to me, like nothing. So how can I understand this? Like explain it to me like I'm five. It's, it's very powerful. Okay. <laughs> it, <laughs> it takes a lot of energy to... I mean, for example, our, our neighbors on one side have a very powerful router and mm-hmm. we get five bars from their network in our house, mm-hmm. even on the opposite side of the house. Oh, geez, right. And, and I don't know what exactly hers is transmitting, but mm-hmm. that's, uh, that's strong stuff. So what do people do when they live in apartments? That, that's a tough one. Someone that's sensitive, that's in an apartment or a townhome and they come to me and, the, and they are truly sick and they're, the, the EMF exposure limits are really high. A lot of times the best thing is they need to move to a better location that's mm-hmm. a little more healthy for them. Because when you have neighbors on four or five sides of you that you can't control what they're doing, right? you need to, and, and you're sick and it's affecting you, it, really the best thing you can do is move because to try to shield your home is very mm. expensive. And, and right. in most cases they don't own the home. Exactly. Renting, so they yeah. don't right. have that option. Is there, is there paint people can use or fabric? Like what, what can we buy to protect ourselves? So there is paint and there is fabric. We're playing around with the fabric today yeah. and we found out how many layers do you actually need to 
bring the level down to where the cell phone doesn't even work. So many. It was yeah, like so, it was like that, eight layers or something. Yeah, and that was some of the best fabric you can get with the silver lining in it, mm-hmm. silver th- threads. Uh, they make canopies out of those that same material, mm-hmm. but it doesn't lower the exposure all the way. It helps a little bit. Right. It dims it there's down. A, there's also expensive too. There's also tin foil. There's tin foil. You could line right. your entire apartment with tin foil. <laughs> that'll that'll really keep your friends. <laughs> <laughs> so those tin foil hats are a real thing. They really do. We were actually experimenting wrapping a cell phone in tin foil mm-hmm. earlier today. It takes two layers. <laughs> Two layers will do it. Yep. Two layers of tinfoil. You wrap your cell phone in and it protects you from harmful EMFs. So, um, yeah. No, no. On that note though, this concept of moving because of EMFs, there's a lot of people like, oh my goodness, that's so crazy. But if you lived in an apartment where the water was toxic sludge, Mm -hmm. you wouldn't think twice before getting out of there. Right. Right. And, and if you are sensitive to these things, then your health is absolutely worth it. Well, think of it like this, like people that move into an apartment with mold, like it's illegal, you know, like Mm -hmm. the the land, like the owner has to do something about an apartment with mold. I think we're going to, in like 20 to 50 years time, we're going to realize, oh my gosh, like this high EMF, like it's, it's almost the equivalent of, it can be the equivalent of mold. You're so optimistic. You are so optimistic. I don't think that'll happen. I should stop talking. I should stop. I just. I think it'll. I think it'll be earlier than that. I think within you think so? ten to twenty years, it's going to be treated exactly like cigarettes. Yeah, absolutely. It, it should. You know, again, people are listening to this and they're probably having heart attacks. You guys, I'm so sorry. Maybe we should take like a commercial break or something. <laughs> Play some like happy like elevator music. <laughs> well, I think focusing on what we can do is mm-hmm. really yeah. good. You know, talking about the options that we yeah. have because there are a lot of options. I, I want to sure. get to that at the end. Please hang in there, you guys. Like, don't have a heart attack right now. We are getting like there's so much hope. There are so many options. There's so many things you can do. So just like keep listening to us for the next 10 minutes and you'll get that. Um, okay. There were some other questions. Maybe we should like cruise. Well, I, I wanted to say something else about the router yeah. question because yes. people ask, you know, how far away should we put it? Um, a lot of routers have ethernet ports in the back Yeah, and you can actually turn off the signal. So it's not a Wi-Fi router. Right. And then it's basically just an ethernet bridge, right? And then you mm-hmm. can directly plug your computer, computer, TV, whatever into the ethernet port. And you've got everything you need without having the, the Wi-Fi signal there. Right. You just have long ethernet cables. Right. I like so, that. so yeah. that honestly would be the best option. Right. And if you can't do that, then move it to the other side of the house. Right. right. And so when people talk about hardwiring their home, that's mm-hmm. exactly what they're referring to. And they make adapters for your cell phones also. And for iPads, for almost all the wireless devices, you can plug them in and can, hardwire Can you get them. those on Amazon or is there yes. a, a better place? Yeah. Amazon. You can get them on Amazon. So there you go. So simple. There you go. Um, okay. Products to purchase. Have we already kind of covered that? What, what um, we talked add? about the fabric. We talked about the paint. Okay. So um, I mean, fab, so that's a kind of a loaded question too. So <laughs> purchase to do what exactly? Because I think maybe they're referring to some of these cheater devices, oh, the, little, the harmonizers yeah. and stickers and stuff. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, we talked about that a little bit, but just be careful of all of those kind of devices that promise you put this sticker on and you're going to be right. fine. The analogy I like to make is, you know, cause they say like the Shungite will absorb some EMF and mm-hmm. it will a little bit. And so, Putting on a Shungite necklace, though, is not going to block you from EMF. It's like putting on a, a necklace with little sponges and then jumping in the pool and saying you're not going to get wet. Right. Because the EMF is coming from all directions. It's fully immersive. And so unless you're wearing a complete Shungite suit, mm-hmm. there's no way that you're going to have keep it off of you. And, right. so, and so in spite of what some of the marketing says, the Shungite is probably not creating a field around your body. No, there, there's no Shungite aura that you can right. rest in and right. be safe. Exactly. Um, maybe we should get to, so what can people do? Like, because there's, there's yeah. a lot of questions that, um, alter, oh, should we cover alternatives to security systems? Cause everyone now has these Wi-Fi security systems, basically get a security system that was like in the nineties, right? Yeah, like we used to do it, uh, have it wired. And a lot of these companies that are around today were around back then and they know how to do that. Mm-hmm. Okay, so so wire your security systems. All right, um, so what do people do? Like, oh, hold on, one more question. How far should you sleep from your phone? Like, what can we do about that? 
So I recommend at night when you're done using your phone, put it on airplane mode and mm-hmm. also make sure your Bluetooth and your wireless is off. So most Samsungs, when you hit airplane mode, it shuts them both off mm-hmm. or all three of them off. But on Apple's or iPhones, you need to shut them all off separately. Okay. And so once all those devices are off, your phone's kind of free game. You can set it there by your nightstand if you want or put it on your pillow, whatever you do with it. It doesn't matter okay. at that yep. point. Me personally, I charge it in the other room because we turn down the circuits, turn off the circuits in our bedroom. Your bedroom. So we, I just plug it in in the kitchen downstairs and let it charge and then in the morning come down and get it. Cool. But yeah, so if it's on, you want to have that as far away from you as possible when you're sleeping, at least 20 feet, at least. Um, you're still over the exposure limits for what these should be in a sleeping area when it's that far away. Okay. So, okay. So that's action plan one, put everything on airplane mode. Um, action plan two, shut down everything at night, like switch the wi fis off, unplug them. Um, smart TVs, you guys, we spoke about this in our last episode, but with your smart TV off, it's still on and it's still emitting a radio frequency. Unplug that at the wall or at some kind of outlet. Make sure there's no electricity going to it, turning it on. So there's a little bit more of a convenient way that you can do this that we've been practicing lately is putting these devices on timers. Mm. So that way you don't have to worry about it. So you say, okay, we go to bed with no technology past 10 Mm -hmm. and we're up in the morning at seven, you know, going at eight. So from 10 at night to seven in the morning, this stuff is off. We have a timer. It's on the wall. You don't have to think about it. You can put your router, you can put your smart TVs, all these devices that are plugged in your Xbox, the stuff you use, Mm -hmm. have that stuff on timers. Or you can think about the other way around is, you know, from three to five or from seven to nine, this is our internet or our technology time. And this is when these devices are on Mm -hmm. and you can have them set on a timer. So it's automatic. So you don't have to think about it. The rest of the time, these devices are off. They're not radiating you. Right. And also you don't just don't have the temptations to jump on and start scrolling, you know, and using mm-hmm. this technology. Totally. You know. And and I like that when when the technology is on between like we'll say like five and seven and everyone can't get on technology and then it goes off like heaven forbid you hang out with each other, right? Right, exactly. Yeah. You <laughs> because know. when you're on technology, you're isolated in your own room, away from family. And then when the technology goes off, everyone kind of comes together and they're like, Well, what do we do? Let's play a board game. Like mm-hmm. let's do puzzles. Like let's read together or, you know, let's let's actually hang out and spend time. Um I know when my cell phone is on airplane mode because I put it on airplane mode a lot and people get really upset. It's so freeing for me. It's like I'm not getting messages pinging at me. I'm not not having my to-do list constantly blinking at me. Like that releases stress and cortisol in my life. Every time my phone flashes at me, like it was so funny. I was at an appointment, um, a lot of, here's one of my beauty secrets. My lashes are fake. You guys, I know, I know everyone is super shocked when I like say, <laughs> mentioned that on Instagram, but, but they're not real. And I was laying down on the table and, um, my, the lady doing my lashes, she's like, your phone is blowing up. And as she said that I could feel like the cortisol like rushing through my body. Cause I'm like, Oh no, I have so many things I need to do, you know? And so, so we don't realize that like these little pings, these little messages, like they're creating a micro, like, like they're micro dosing us with stress, mm-hmm. you know? Um, so just switch them off and you're completely liberated and free. And you'll realize like, Oh my gosh, this is, this is a very freeing experience. So just having these little boundaries, right. Would just be so helpful. Um, what else can people do? Well, and to add to that a little bit, I hear a lot of times, well, I can't turn my phone on airplane mode. I'm on call or I have Mm. kids that are out or I'm expecting a phone call or, you know, what if something happens with the friend? So all these different things, that's totally understandable. What you can do is get a house phone and UMA, we talked about earlier, UMA Mm -hmm. 699, super cheap. Mm -hmm. Just get a house phone. So that that. Way, when you walk in the door and if you even want to go one step further, you can forward your cell phone to the house phone. Oh, it's, I like it takes that. literally 10 seconds. Yeah. That's star six, seven, the number boom, it goes right to your house phone. There you go. I like that so much. Um, what, uh, like what else should people do? People that have baby monitors, um, white noise machines, what can they do? What should we do around babies? Babies are, certainly an area that we want to be really cautious with EMFs because their cells are dividing really fast. They're growing Mm -hmm. really fast. Um, They need all the help they can get. And so baby monitors, you know, I test those a lot and they're actually really, really high. So, you know, just think about what did we do 20 years ago, 30 years ago, 40 years ago, everybody survived just fine without a lot of this wireless stuff. Mm -hmm. Really a lot of it comes down to a little bit of a lifestyle change of how, what, what can we do instead 
you know, mm-hmm. these, these are convenient, yes, but they're causing more of a health issue. Yeah. You know, especially you bring up baby monitor. You know, that's something that, you know, I'm real passionate about. I'm trying to make sure that, you know, we do healthy home assessments for just nurseries and for, for new mothers to make sure that the room is super clean, you know, organic, healthy air, no VOCs. But EMF is a big one. Don't have that baby monitor there. And if you have yeah. to, have it across the room. Put it as far across the room as you can. Okay. Awesome. Um, <laughs> seriously, someone needs to create a line where baby blankets are like wrapped in tin foil or something. <laughs> I'm not even uh, kidding. Like maybe this is like part of our next business. Too, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll create another product line like that. Um, okay. That like, I think that covers a lot. Is there anything you want to close us out with Ryan? Things that people should know, things that people should do. Um, what, what is, what's your parting <laughs> words of wisdom? You know, I, I get a lot of different feedback from people all the way from, you know, I, I can't live without my wireless or this isn't healthy or it is. And then what it comes down to is you have your own choice of how you want to expose yourself and your family. Mm-hmm. It's your choice with what devices you want to put in, into your life. And mm-hmm. these guidelines that are set are set all across the board. We have guidelines from the building biology that are set just for health reasons. We have guidelines set from the FCC that are set really high so that we can get a lot of technology out there. You can choose. It's your choice what guidelines you want to follow. Yeah. And when it comes down to it, it's your own health. I like that. Thank you so much. Anything you want to say, Tris? No, I think that was good. I think we covered a lot, a lot of food for thought. And again, you guys, there's so much that can be done. I mean, just it's, it just takes like, like those minor inconveniences of turning things on airplane mode every now and then, Um, especially with kids, make sure you are pre-downloading movies, videos, games that don't require to be, you know, once it's downloaded to the device, then put it on airplane mode and let them play with that. You know, just, just these little things that take a little bit more um, forethought Mm -hmm. and then like a little bit goes a long way. You know, again, it's the convenient, the, the inconvenience is so minor and it just becomes your new normal. But, um, but I think what we should end on is like stress can sometimes be more harmful. Yeah. Mm, Yeah. That's a good one. So let's like really be mindful of your stress. You guys like stress can make or break you. So everything you can do is going to make it better. mm -hmm. And before you knew about this, you were doing probably the worst possible thing. So if all you can do is improve 10%, That's That's, awesome. mm -hmm. That's 10% better than it was. Right. right? And that's going to make a difference for you. So rest easy in that knowledge. Don't stress about the the rest that you couldn't take care of. Exactly. And, and you guys, you spend a third of your life in your bed. So if there's one thing you're going to change, it's switching off everything while you're sleeping because one, no one's using it. And two, that's a lot of time. <laughs> like right. that, that's a lot of time you're accruing together to minimize your exposure. So create a healthy sleep sanctuary and just switch everything off. And what else? Um, we should probably tell them how to get in touch oh, with yeah. Ryan if they're interested in learning more about that's what important. he does. Testmyhome.com yep. is, is the website that you can go to and mm-hmm. learn all about that. He does some really amazing stuff and he is full of brilliance. So you want to get to know this guy. Exactly. And yeah, thank do, you. Do you have any other platforms that people can get a hold of you or is that the main one? That's really the main one. We have an Instagram page that we're getting going now, but really the website is got a lot of good information on it. My awesome. wife put that together. She did an amazing job. She really did. Yeah. She did a, hi, Sam. How's it going? <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, Ryan's wife's name is Sam, guys. That's why I was just saying that right there in case that wasn't clear. Um, thank you so much again. Yeah, you bet. Um, you guys, please leave a review if you love the episode. If you like the podcast, please subscribe. Tell your friends, you know, all that jazz. And, um, and we will talk to you next week. See you later. Bye. See ya.